Hi everyone, the washing machine has torn my t-shirt again, evidently I have to throw it away. It's good that there is a container nearby. Mm hmm. Will someone really get this t-shirt for free? Hmm, I need to google it. Well, it's not a suitable option. Maybe it's possible to recycle old clothes chemically and make something useful from them. Let's find out. Do you know how to dive into the world of neural networks as efficiently as possible? You just need to be an expert in the field of programming or have a suitable and correct tool that can solve any problem. And Brilliant helps me in this. Brilliant is an amazing tool for learning based on problem solving with a hands-on approach with more than 60 interactive courses in mathematics, natural sciences and computer science. Yes, now, going through a small task a day and increasing the load constantly you can pump up your critical thinking without leaving home. Brilliant will surprise you every time, not even like that. You'll surprise yourself every time by upgrading your knowledge and skills in programming with the help of courses and generate new ways to solve problems. Interested? Then follow my link brilliant.org slash 2 and register for free. And the first 200 people will receive a 20% discount on a premium subscription. Besides a worldwide problem of plastic waste, which is currently in heavy rotation, forcing the government to ban the use of disposable spoons and straws and making plastic bags cost an exorbitant price, only few people think about other problems humanity is facing, for instance the problem of textile waste. Frankly speaking, I don't consider myself to be a fashion man or a lover of wearing expensive clothes and then coming home and eating cheap noodles and rusts. However, some people in our society have a different opinion. Many people buy piles of clothes, wear them a couple of times to show off, and then simply throw them away, give them to their relatives or put them into special containers meant for poor people who supposedly can take them for free. In reality, nowadays, major second-hand shops own such containers, and 90% of such donated clothes will go to waste anyway, because of having some defects or being unfit for sale. That is why today, most unnecessary clothes end their life cycle at local landfills, mixed with plastic, making the ecological problem even worse, which humanity created back in the mid-20th century. Speaking of the plastic problem, nowadays humanity is approaching a real plastic disaster because there has accumulated so much polymer waste that there is nowhere to dispose of it. In some countries, besides landfills, even forests and many bodies of water, which look like trashy soaps, are overloaded with rubbish and seasoned it with dirt. All of this creates a huge environmental problem, because when polymers decay, they release toxic and cancerous chemical compounds into water and soil. For instance, such a chemical as the bisphenol A gets released, which is used in some kinds of plastic items as a hardener. Besides hazardous chemicals, simply floating plastic rubbish in the oceans can harm a lot of kinds of animals, which often get stuck in it or mistake it for food. For instance, many girls eat plastic cups and think that it's their breakfast, because they have very few taste receptors on their tongues, which is why their stomachs simply get filled with ingestible plastics and birds die, which is very sad. Also, we should not forget about the problem of microplastic, which forms when sunlight breaks down some polymers into particles, which are just several micrometers wide, which can stay in the air or get carried by sea currents. The paradox is that initially scientists and engineers developed different kinds of plastics as a new and ideal material, which is light, firm and lasts almost forever. I think you know that plastic bottles need 500 years to break down in the soil. That's because there are no bacteria or other microorganisms in nature which can break it down, or simply put, eat polymer molecules different kinds of plastic are made of. Of course, if we wait for a couple of dozen million of years, maybe there will be microorganisms which can recycle some kind of plastic, but for now, people themselves have to find a solution for how to recycle piles of polymeric rubbish along with old textile and clothes that no one needs. 
Well, in contrast to governments, which can only ban something, I went to the polymer chemistry department of Tallinn University of Technology to investigate solutions to this problem. There, along with local scientists, we'll try to recycle unnecessary clothes along with some used plastic, obtaining a new and unusual material. In this laboratory, scientists and students develop new polymer materials and also methods of recycling plastic waste. Добрый день, меня зовут Илья Краснов, я научный сотрудник на кафедре полимерных материалов Таллинского технического университета. Сегодня мы займемся переработкой пластиковых отходов. У нас есть много различных бытовых отходов из полипропилена. Я специально отобрал полипропилен, чтобы его перерабатывать вместе. И текстиль старый, хлопок, лен. Сегодня будем работать с натуральными волокном. But why polypropylene, you may wonder? I think I have to tell you about some basic concepts in polymer chemistry. Nowadays, plastic salt in shops is divided into many types. For instance, a container may be made of polyethylene, another container may be made of polypropylene, and yet another container may even be made of polyethylene terephthalate. That's because certain polymers are more suitable for storing certain products. For instance, polyethylene withstands low temperatures well, which is why it is used to store different frozen foods. On the other hand, polypropylene withstands hot water well, which is why it's used to make different containers for food. The more kinds of plastic there are on the market, the harder it's to recycle it. The problem is that the chemical composition of all kinds of plastic is completely different, which is why they have different viscosity, hardness and other properties. Of course, all kinds of plastic can just be melted together when recycled and be used to make a crypt piece of plastic tile like they do in Africa. But because different kinds of plastic almost doesn't mix together, firmness and durability of such tiles are very questionable. That is why, because different kinds of plastic cannot be mixed to produce a high-quality product, Ilya has sorted and rinsed different polypropylene plastic waste at home beforehand. We choose this kind of plastic because it's quite durable and easy to recycle. We just need to chop it to the desired size, which is why first we chopped a yogurt bottle and other plastic items into small pieces, and a laboratory mill did the rest. Basically, what we are doing here is what happens at plastic recycling plants, but at a smaller scale, and with a little bit of know-how that big plants are far from using. Besides plastic waste, we are also going to recycle textile. That's why along with bits of plastic, we are also sending pieces of an old cotton shot into the mill. Just like the previous raw material, this textile needs to be well ground with the help of the mill. The textile ended up being 30% of the whole mass. Now, in order for polypropylene to mix with textile and form a single material, we are adding a regular chalk to improve the fluidity of the mass and also a special polymer. You can see its name on your screen. This additive will help textile to better bond with the plastic in order for the obtained material not crumble and flake. In the end, to give our material a lighter color, I'm adding a little bit of titanium dioxide, which serves as a pigment. After storing all the components of such plastic, they need to be melted, in order for all the ingredients to get stored as well as possible, making a smooth mass, which will be easy to work with. For this purpose, there is a special extruder in the laboratory, which is used for both educational and research purposes. Its mechanism is fairly simple. After being loaded with plastic granules, the screw conveyor sends plastic into the chamber, heated to a certain temperature where it melts and is formed into such a roll. Basically, this mechanism is slightly more complex than that of a regular mincer. First, we clean the device from the vestiges of the previous experiments that the students conducted with the help of pure polypropylene granules. Uh, Инструмент, вот этот классный. Да, это очень удобный, эргономичный. Да. Да. After that, we started loading the machine with our mixture of plastic and textile. Some time later, the machine started working and producing what resembles hairy macaroni. Yes, this is that very plastic mixed with cotton clothes, which for now doesn't look that attractive. 
But still, for our next experiment, we need at least 300 grams of such raw material. That's why we sent our macaroni to cool off on a special conveyor when they turned into hardened sticks made of a rather unusual material. Because of containing chalk and cotton, the obtained material is rather porous, and that's why such sticks are quite fragile. But still, this raw material can be used to cast some small plastic items. For this, we need special copper molds, and we are fitting our obtained hairy plastic macaroni into the molds, and after that, we press them into shape with the help of a special heated press machine. 10 minutes later, we are taking out the obtained plastic shapes and cooling them off in cold water. As a result, we got such a plastic plate made of recycled plastic and old clothes. I think we can make something interesting from it in the future. But what properties does the obtained plastic have, you may wonder. As they say, everything is relative. To measure some physical properties, we decided to make the same plate, but one made of pure polypropylene and without textile. To do that, we went through the same process, like we did with the previous raw material, but this time we used ready pure polypropylene granules. Result, we got two such plates, one made of plastic and textile and other made of factory raw material. They weight almost the same, because both clothes and polypropylene have extremely low density, besides pure polypropylene is the lightest plastic in the world. I decided to measure the hardness of these two plates with a special device which is designed to measure the hardness of different plastics. Basically both plates show similar results. That's why recycled plastic almost doesn't differ from a factory-made one. The only major difference is smell. The smell of the plate with textile slightly resembles burnt caramel. Most probably, that's because during the extrusion, part of cellulose the shot consists of slightly broke down on being heated, producing such a slightly sweet smell. I'll also try to test the water resistance of these two plates. To do that first, I waited them, soaked them in hot water for an hour. After that, I wiped them with a napkin and measured the mess again. Turns out that even the plastic with textile didn't soak a single gram of water, and it's widely known fact that pure polypropylene is water resistant. And if that was not enough, you can use such a recycled plastic to cast almost anything in special machines. To demonstrate that, we need to return to the laboratory. It's equipped with a rather powerful Austrian machine for molding plastic. It can be loaded with different kinds of plastic and we can see how well different kinds of plastic get molded under pressure. In our case, before molding, we crumbled our leftover hairy macaroni, obtaining small granules, which can be fed into the machine. The principle of the work of this mechanism is not difficult either. First, the machine heats up and the chamber gets filled with plastic, where it melts quite quickly. After that, the screw conveyor pushed out the molten plastic, like a mincer, into a mold through special holes. Because the molds are cooled off with cold water, the plastic hardens almost immediately, and the ready components fall beneath the machine. As a result, in just several minutes, you can mold many different plastic components, which are known in our university as bones, with an almost ideal surface for different physical experiments. Besides bones made of recycled polypropylene and clothes, we also made test samples made of pure polypropylene. After producing all the samples, they need to sit for about a week to allow crystallization of polymers. Their hardness and durability will be significantly improved, especially if compared with those of freshly made plastic bones. Well, it's time for testing. In our university, there is such a machine for conducting physical tests of different materials. It measures the tensile strength. The shape of our plastic bones is just ideal for such experiments. That's why after some tweaking we can start our tests. As we can see, pure polypropylene doesn't stretch well. 
because it's a fragile plastic, but still, such a bone withstood the pulling force of 101 kg. For instance, if you compare it with polyethylene, the latter plastic is more malleable, but it withstood just 70 kg, which is 40% less. So let's see how our recycled plastic will behave here. Turns out that recycled plastic is even slightly firmer than pure factory made propylene because this bone withstood 109 kg before it broke. Interestingly enough, the plastic with clothes turned out to be even firmer than pure polypropylene, which is why it almost didn't stretch. But still, the higher the elastic modulus is, the more fragile the material is. For instance, this bone made of pure polypropylene bent slightly when I try to break it, but the plastic with textile is much easier to break, even though it's slightly firmer. Such properties of the obtained material can be used for making some everyday objects, which need to be both hard and light at the same time. For instance, if you substitute a preform in a molding machine, we can produce, let's say, plastic door handles or smartphone cases. Unfortunately, we didn't have such molds in our laboratory. That is why for demonstration purposes we decided to cut out a hairbrush from a plastic plate we made beforehand with the help of a laser. By the way, as we can see, this kind of plastic is suitable for cutting with a laser. The edges turn out to be even and smooth. For instance, if we compare this hairbrush to a hairbrush that is completely made of polypropylene, we'll see that regular plastic is less even and smooth. Now I can brush my hair with the help of a hairbrush made of recycled plastic, which could have been dumped into a landfill and could have polluted the environment. That's why I think this technology has a great potential, because it solves two problems at the same time, which is disposing of plastic and disposing of textile which no one needs and which litters landfills. Besides hairbrushes, the obtained composite material containing textile can also be used to make furniture. For instance, these old water-resistant plastic strips and old clothes can be used for that. Еще такой вопрос, насколько вот эта технология получается выгодная вообще вот с этим с одеждой? Но так на вскидку можно сказать, что это не будет очень выгодно, потому что ну, дешевле купить новый пластик в Китае и сделать из него все, что нужно. That is why oftentimes countries which are so proud of their plastic waste recycling rates simply sort different kinds of plastic, and after that they sell them to poorer countries for recycling or simply for burning. But wait, basically recycling means, for instance, to take this container, melt it and make something else from it, right? This is when cunning legislative terms come into play. And what may be called burning plastic waste in one country may be called recycling in another country. That is why because of the high cost of the recycling plastic in rich countries, only 9% of plastic waste is really recycled in the world and all plastic bottles are used to make, for instance, flower pots. This leads to a conclusion that nowadays immediate recycling of plastic waste must be supported by the government and tax cuts must be in place. This is the only way to make this process profitable. I reckon that the technology developed under the supervision of Ilya will interest sponsors and get good exposure in the future. For instance, if you and your acquaintances work in the universities or some other interesting technologies and they want the whole world to learn about them, send your messages to my email address. I'll gladly come to you and make a video about your project. Let's promote science together. So, I think after watching this video, you'll know more about plastic recycling and how to better recycle some textile. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see many more new and interesting.